Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lipak Shikurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you. UN General Assembly President meets India's Foreign Minister in New Delhi. Blast at mosque in Pakistan's Peshawar targets police, more than 27 killed. And residents in Afghanistan's Kabul struggle in bitterly cold weather. And now for all the details, United Nations General Assembly UNGA President Kasaba Khorasi on Monday met India's Foreign Minister S. J. Shankar in New Delhi during his first official visit to the country. Both the leaders held talks on key global challenges, UN reform, the Ukraine conflict and G20 agenda. Jay Shankar said on Twitter that he assured the UNGA President of India's fullest support in developmental progress and reformed multilateralism. Apart from interacting with senior government officials and India's G20 presidency team, Khorasi paid a visit to the Memorial of Indian Freedom Struggle leader Mahatma Gandhi on his 75th death anniversary. The UNGA President during a public address said that India's leadership on global challenges has been exemplary. He also extolled India's calls for peace in Ukraine and across the world. India's leadership on global challenges and her strong voice in multilateral affairs have been exemplary. The journeys of the UN and independent India have been intertwined since the prospective founding in the 1940s. For seven decades we have traveled hand in hand and India's main opposition Congress party leader Rahul Gandhi's unity march, the Bharat Jodo Yatra, concluded on Monday in India's northern German Kashmir. The five-month-long march saw Rahul Gandhi walk the length of the country from India's southern tip, Kanyakumari, hoping to repair the battered image of his party and take on Prime Minister Narendra Modi's dominant Bharatiya Janata Party. India's opposition Congress party leader Rahul Gandhi on Monday ended his 135 days long foot march in Srinagar city of India's Jammu and Kashmir with hundreds of people including leaders of several opposition parties gathering at the conclusion ceremony. Named Bharat Jodo Yatra or Unite India March, Gandhi began his journey from India's southern tip of Kanyakumari in September last year hoping to repair the battered image of Congress which has been decimated in two successive general elections. Rahul Gandhi in his address said he wanted to remind India that it is a country of love, respect and brotherhood. The aim was to stand against the ideology that wants to destroy the foundation of the country, he said, attacking Prime Minister Narendra Modi's ruling Bharatiya Janata Party. <laughs> मिलकर खड़े हो नफरत से नहीं क्योंकि वो हमारा तरीका नहीं है मोहब्बत से खड़े हो मैं जानता हूं कि अगर हम मोहब्बत से खड़े होंगे प्यार से बात रखेंगे तो हमें सफलता मिलेगी और उनकी जो विचारधारा है उनको हम सिर्फ उसको हम सिर्फ हराएंगे नहीं मगर उस विचारधारा को the Bharat Jodo Yatra in the last 135 days covered 3,570 kilometers through 14 Indian states. The once dominant Congress controls less than 10% of the elected seats in Parliament's lower house. It faces an uphill task against the BJP that appears poised to sweep the general election due next year. Well, in news from Pakistan, an explosion in a mosque killed more than 27 people and wounded 150 in Pakistan's northwestern city of Peshawar on Monday. The mosque was located inside a compound that includes the headquarters of the provincial police force and a counter-terrorism department. 
According to the police, there were some 260 people inside when the blast occurred. Many of the casualties were police officers who had gathered for daily noon prayers. An eyewitness talking to local media said the blast also caused the two-story building to collapse, leading to many getting buried under the rubble. Peshawar's police chief Izaz Khan said the possibility of a suicide bombing could not be ruled out as traces of explosives were found inside the mosque. No terror group had claimed responsibility for the blast and the last reports came in. Modern news from Pakistan. Cash-strapped Pakistan has announced a 35 rupees increase in the prices of petrol and diesel days after its currency depreciated to its lowest against the U.S. dollar in the interbank and open market. The decision comes as an international monetary fund mission is set to arrive in Islamabad this week for talks. Petrol and diesel prices in Pakistan were increased by 35 rupees days after country's currency value plummeted when price caps were removed. The decision announced by Finance Minister Ishaq Dar on Sunday came as an international monetary fund mission will visit Pakistan this week to discuss the stalled ninth review of the country's current funding program. Last week, the Pakistani rupee lost close to 12% of its value after the removal of price caps that were imposed by the government but which were opposed by the MF. Dar said that he hoped the announcement would dispel speculation on social media of a higher price hike or that petrol supplies would run dry. He further added that the hike was recommended by oil and gas authorities due to the higher cost of buying energy in the global market. Ke petrol and diesel ki kimto mein 35-35 rupay fee litre izafa hoga aur kerosene oil or light diesel oil mein 18-18 rupay the Pakistani rupee on Monday hit an all-time low after dropping about 2.56% to 269.5 rupees per dollar from its previous close in the interbank market. Moving the rupee to a market-based exchange rate is one of several conditions set by the IMF to start talks over the ninth review of Pakistan's $7 billion bailout program. A successful IMF visit is critical for Pakistan, which is facing an increasingly acute balance of payments crisis and is desperate to secure external financing with less than three weeks of import cover in its foreign exchange reserves. And moving on, authorities in Pakistan's Rawalpindi recently demolished at least five houses of minority Hindus and Christians who were living in the cantonment area for the past 70 years. The victims blamed it to be a tactic of persecution and said they were not given any prior notice. They said belongings were thrown on the streets to evict them despite having proper documents. Authorities in Pakistan's Rawalpindi have demolished houses of minority Hindus and Christians who were living in the cantonment area for the past 70 years. Reports suggest at least five houses were demolished on January 27, which belonged to Hindu, Christian and Shia families. The victims blamed they were not given any prior notice and their belongings were thrown on the streets to evict them, despite having proper documents. The accused, the police also refused to file a complaint of attack on them. और हमने बड़ा इनसे मुकाबला किया इनसे कहे इनसे पहले इन्होंने हमारे दुकानदारों के सिर भी फाड़े हैं हमारे बच्चों के हाथ भी तोड़े हैं इनके पास इतनी अप्रोच और इतनी पावर है कि इन्होंने एफआईआर तक नहीं कटने दी माइनॉरिटीज इन पाकिस्तान हैव बीन फेसिंग एक्सप्लोइटेशन एंड परसिक्यूशन फॉर द पास्ट सेवरल डेकेड्स व्हाइल द एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन पुलिस एंड इवन जुडिशियरी रिमेन म्यूट स्पेक्टेटर्स well, in news from Afghanistan, Kabul residents on Sunday said they were struggling in bitterly cold weather and are unable to heat their homes in temperatures well below freezing as they could not afford firewood and charcoal. The coldest winter in 15 years, which has seen temperatures dip as low as minus 34 degrees Celsius, has hit Afghanistan in the middle of a severe economic crisis. <music> Residents in Kabul city of Afghanistan on Sunday were seen struggling in bitterly cold weather, unable to heat their homes in temperatures well below freezing because they said they could not afford firewood and charcoal. Authorities have said that more than 160 people have died from the cold in Afghanistan this month. 
in the worst winter in more than a decade and about 84 of the deaths that have taken place in the last week alone. The coldest winter in 15 years, which has seen temperatures dip as low as minus 34 degrees Celsius, has set Afghanistan in the middle of severe economic crisis. <laughs> Many aid groups have partially suspended operations in recent weeks due to the Taliban administration ruling that most female NGO workers could not work, leaving agencies unable to operate many programs in the conservative country. No foreign government has formally recognized the Taliban administration since it seized power, with some diplomats saying it must change course on women's rights. Many countries have expressed major concerns over the ban on girls above age 12 on attending school or university. And Nepal on Sunday dispatched two stones of Shaligram to the Indian city of Ayodhya to be used for making the idol of Lord Ram, which will be placed in the under construction Ram Janambhumi temple. Banks of the Kali Kandaki River is the only place where Shaligram stones are found and are considered sacred. Nepal on Sunday dispatched two Shaligram stones considered as non-anthropomorphic representation of Lord Vishnu in Hindu religion for the Indian city of Ayodhya for the construction of Ram and Janaki idols expected to be placed in the main temple complex of under construction Ram Janambhumi temple. These stones are found only near the river banks of Kali Gandhiki river that flows through Mayagdi and Mustang district. Nepali Congress leader Bimalendra Nidhi coordinated with Indian authorities for dispatching the stones. He said the Nepal's Janki temple would later also send a bow to Ram temple in Ayodhya as per the specification of the Ram temple trust. The two stones weighing 18 tons and 16 tons will reach Ayodhya by 1st of February. In the Kali Gandhi river is well known and very precious in the world. It's kind of, it is said, it is accepted that this stone is the symbol of Bhagavan Vishnu. Ram is the incarnation of Vishnu. That is why the stone from the Gandhi river is, if available, it will be very good to make Ram Lala's Murti in Ayodhya for the Ram, Ram uh, Janvabhi temple. सर्वप्रथम यो एउटा नेपालकै लागि एउटा महत्त्वपूर्ण कुरा हो हाम्रो मेघदि जिल्लाको मात्र नभएर यो स्थानीय स्थानको मात्र नभएर नेपालकै गौरवको विषय हो जो नेपाल र भारत बीचको जुन सम्बन्ध छ त्यो सम्बन्ध अझ प्रगाढ हुने एउटा मौका आएको छ त्यसकोलाई हामी एउटा नेपाली नै खुसी हुनु पर्ने अवस्थामा हामी यहाँको स्थानीय त अत्यन्तै खुसी छौ दि शालिग्राम शिलास आर वर्शिप्ड एज लॉर्ड विष्णु इन हिन्दू रिलिजन एन्ड इट इज बिलीव्ड लॉर्ड राम वाज एन इन्कार्नेशन अफ लॉर्ड विष्णु the Indian city of Ayodhya is believed to be the birthplace of Lord Ram. Nathalie Massey, a French psychologist, was felicitated in India's southern Coimbatore on Sunday as she cycled her way from France, covering around 8,000 kilometers across 10 countries to spread the message of preventing soil erosion. A French psychologist and cyclist Nathalie Massey was felicitated in India's southern Coimbatore city on Sunday as she cycled her way from France covering around 8,000 kilometers across 10 countries to spread the message of preventing soil erosion. Massey, who reached Coimbatore on Saturday, visited several educational institutions to raise soil awareness and interact with students as part of her Wheels for Soil journey. The French cyclist started her ride on June 21st, the same day when Indian yoga personality Sadhguru Jaggi Vasudev completed his three-month motorcycle journey in Coimbatore after covering 27 countries for a safe soil movement. As a psychologist, I can see how many children are completely um, uh, um, uh, with anxiety, 
uh, with um, uh, uh, lots of uh, trouble, disorder trouble, because of uh, the disconnection with uh, the soil and with the nature. So that really uh, struck me. Italy, Turkey, Serbia, Croatia and Bulgaria are some of the countries that Masse covered. Feeding a growing global population will become almost impossible if the world doesn't take better care of its rapidly deteriorating soils, humanitarian agencies say. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now, our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.